When it was released in 1960, Psycho was one of the most controversial films of the day, thanks in part to the surprising, for the time, depictions of violence and sexuality that it contains. In an effort to keep spoilers to a minimum and thus ensure audiences were as surprised as possible by the film's more shocking twists and scenes, Hitchcock went to some rather extreme lengths to keep the film's basic plot a secret. For starters, one of the first things Hitchcock did after reading the original 1959 novel that the film was based on, Psycho by Robert Bloch, and deciding that he just had to adapt it to film, was charge his assistant with purchasing as many copies of the book as possible to keep it out of the public's hands. Exactly how many copies Hitchcock managed to get his hands on isn't known, but it is generally thought that he came reasonably close to purchasing every copy on the shelves at the time. This must have been nice for Block, at least financially, who not only got a little over $9,000, about $71,000 today for the movie rights to the novel, but also a nice payout for all of those extra copies that Hitchcock purchased. Although Hitchcock was positively enamored by the novel's twists and shocking content, which was partly inspired by the killings of Ed Gein, who also inspired the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, Paramount Pictures weren't. They particularly didn't like the fact that Hitchcock's contract with them only guaranteed he'd do one other film for them, and they didn't want to be psycho. To try and dissuade Hitchcock from pursuing the film any further, executives more or less attempted to halt production at every turn, which only strengthened the director's resolve. For example, the studio refused to give Hitchcock his usual budget, offering him just shy of a million dollars instead of the three million dollars and change they'd given to him for his previous film, North by Northwest. Rather than scrap the project as they hoped, a defiant Hitchcock decided instead to simply film the movie using a television crew mostly borrowed from his show, Alfred Hitchcock presented and then shoot the entire thing in black and white. Hitchcock also managed to secure the film's main two actors, Janet Leigh and Anthony Perkins, for a fraction of their usual fees, saving tens of thousands of dollars. He also, as a demonstration of his faith in the project, turned down his normal pay and instead very wisely opted for a percentage of the film's ultimate returns, reportedly at a whopping 60%. In a further attempt to get him to scrap the project in favor of something they deemed better to complete his contract with them, Paramount Pictures told Hitchcock Hitchcock, their sound stages and other such needed equipment were completely booked, even though they weren't. Again, Hitchcock was undeterred and moved production over to Universal Studios. On that note, Paramount's unwillingness to commit to the film inadvertently led to their rivals, Universal Studios, making a decent bit of money. You see, after filming wrapped, Universal got to keep the Bates Motel set, which became a big draw for fans taking a tour of the studio lot. In any event, ultimately, Paramount gave in and greenlit the project, though at this stage not nearly as involved in this as they'd normally have been. This proved to be a boon to Hitchcock as he was free from executive meddling. It also allowed him to film on what was essentially a closed set, helping to ensure that no details of the plot leaked. To further this, Hitchcock made the cast and crew promise that they wouldn't talk about the film, its plot, or twists. Rumor had it, he made each and every one of them say in front of him, I promise I shall not divulge the plot of Psycho. Even after the film was finished, Hitchcock barred both Lee and Perkins from giving any interviews concerning it, instead choosing to promote the film almost entirely by himself. To avoid giving away any potential details about the plot, Hitchcock's promotional efforts focused wholly on alluding to the film's shocking twists and content without giving away any details. For instance, he sent a guide to theaters instructing them what to do in the event that someone had a heart attack while watching the film. This is something Hitchcock would later double down on at screenings by hiring nurses to stand around theater lobbies. Hitchcock also took out a number of ads in the lead-up to the film's release that merely featured an image of himself pointing sternly at his watch with a statement that said nobody who turned up to the film late would be permitted to see that showing of it. Other ads, and even a clip at the end of the film, feature an image of Hitchcock encouraging those who watched it not to spoil the film for others, saying things like, After you see Psycho, don't give away the ending, it's the only one we have. And if you can't keep a secret, please stay away from people after you see Psycho. The final means with which the plot could potentially be spoiled early was with movie critics. As such, Hitchcock didn't allow critics to see an advanced copy, suggesting instead they watch it on release day like everybody else. Annoyed critics generally responded by savaging the film, and as Hitchcock suspected they would, giving away plot points that he'd tried so hard to protect. For example, in their 1960 review of the film, Variety mentioned that the film contained several graphically depicted knife murders. After the film was a smashing success with the public, many of the critics who'd initially called the film a schlock bravely changed their opinion and began referring to it as a masterpiece of cinema. 
Paramount similarly forgot all about how they'd initially tried to can the film before production began, and heroically tried to ride Hitchcock's coattails after the film proved to be one of the most profitable they'd ever produced up to that point, grossing about $32 million, that's about $252 million today, in its initial run. And now for a bonus fact. When it was released, Psycho was somewhat controversial for containing a number of things that weren't deemed acceptable by the notably prudish standards of the day, including a shot of an unwed man and a woman in a bed together, a shot of an uncovered female bottom, which belonged to Janet Lee's body double and was censored in some versions, and perhaps most hilarious, an image of a toilet being flushed. In fact, Psycho is thought to be the first movie where a toilet is shown being flushed at all. The momentous flushing took place just before Janet Lee's character takes takes a shower and subsequently gets stabbed to death. Another controversy was over Janet Lee's breasts, although there's never actually any frontal nudity present in the film. When censors first viewed a cut of the film, an argument broke out about whether it was possible to see Janet Lee's breast during the shower scene. Hitchcock told the censors he'd edit the scene. A few days later, he sent the exact same cut to censors, but this time they didn't complain. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, why not check out my podcast? It's called The Brain Food Show. If you search Brain Food, one word in Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows, you are going to find it. And as always, thank you for watching.